99X in the morning, X. It's Barnes and Leslie. This is a big moment for me. I'm bringing on one of my all time heroes, Offspring, who uh, <laughs> is kind of a, a new hero for me anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Wolfgang Van Halen. Hey, man. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, uh, w- should we formally call you Wolf, yeah. Wolfie, or Wolfgang? Whatever you, whatever you feel like. I think Wolf. I like I like Wolf. You know, I saw some clips recently. I have to ask you about playing Music Cares in L.A. Yeah. right before the Grammys to honor John Bon Jovi. And I guess you did uh, Have a Nice Day. Was that a request from Mr. Bon Jovi? Yeah, yeah. He's the one who requested that that we play that. So, I mean, how do, how do you say no to that? <laughs> I know. How was it, though? I mean, I, I saw the, you know, Springsteen was there. Bon, John Bon Jovi it was crazy. It was unbelievably nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I think, you know, right before just getting on stage, I remember sharing a moment with my guitar player, John, where we just kind of looked at each other when it was dark and we were just kind of like, wow, we're really, we're really doing this. And then I kind of centered myself, looked up and I saw the table where John, Mr. Bon Jovi was sitting. Uh, and it was him, Bruce Springsteen and Paul McCartney. And wow. uh, it was just kind of like, okay, here, let's play a, a Bon Jovi song for Bon Jovi. <laughs> it was, uh, I, I'm very happy to be on the other side of it. I'm very happy I didn't mess up. Uh, but I, I'd be lying if I told you I was totally cool under all that pressure. I was collapsing. <laughs> well, you, um, your dad was my first concert ever. Wow. And it was Black Sabbath with Van Halen opening in wow. Corpus Christi, Texas. That's amazing. And I remember it vividly. And for me at 15, and that was before, I think I was like nine or 10 when I went to that. At like 15, I started doing fake Van Halen concerts in my bedroom. Like (laughs) my boys, you know, we had the taped up fake guitar, the whole thing. I see that. Uh But you at 16 were in Van Halen. Yeah. And I can't even imagine, like go back to when you first started doing that. Was that surreal or just regular old day? I was just kind of regular for me, you know, It's because it, it started out, we were just jamming for fun, you know, and it was just uh, a way to bond with my family. And uh, then we realized that there was, you know, there was something more there and it just kind of snowballed into what it became. Do, do you think that how much of your skill, because you can play everything, <laughs> everything meaning instruments, what how much of that is genetic and how much of that is just that you just picked up on it really fast because i mean it's insane how <laughs> close to your dad you are when playing the guitar i thank you i i, I think uh you can certainly be like genetically predisposed yeah. to maybe uh to maybe you know having an affinity towards uh, you know a hobby or a skill but uh, you know the truth is i've been playing since i was 9 I, we were going to ask you that when you started playing and kind of started doing your own thing. You were yeah. nine years old. I can imagine that, though, because, you know, the musical family. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be 33 next month. So it's like I, at a certain point, just the rule of hours I've played, uh, you know, it's like I should be able to play or else that that's not good <laughs> with the amount of time I've put in. Um, you know, I, I started playing drums when I was nine, guitar when I was 12, um, and then uh, picked up the bass shortly after. Um, and I just uh, that's... All I do. So, uh, but the difference, uh, Wolf, is that I mean, when you decided you wanted to play drums, you call Uncle Alex, and you climb behind that monstrosity of a set, probably, and learn from him. What's it like getting drum lessons from Uncle Alex? I never got any. None. My, my, my dad is the one who taught me how to play drums. Really? Yeah, he taught me how to play "Highway to Hell," and then I took it from there. Uh, I started, you know, learning. Uh, from listening, you know, from listening to Blink-182 and, and Tool and, and Van Halen and just kind of uh, trying to replicate what I heard. Well, at the end of the Austin show when I was in college, this was years later after seeing him for the first time, at the end of it, you know how they, the classic, they would always come and do the, the joined hands and do the bow. Yeah. And Uncle Alex put both his sticks in my hands and I was, oh, I was in the awesome. front row. And I was just like, I thought I had just, you know, won yes. the lottery. I have him framed still today. That's amazing. It's so cool to talk to you, Wolfgang, and, you know, not to rehash stuff, but I'm still, you know, thinking about you as a 15, 16 year old playing with Van Halen and not kind of realizing the pressure because I've seen interviews with you where you said at the time, you know, people hated you because you were replacing a member of the band. Like, 
How did you handle that at such a young age? Uh, I didn't. I think it was a lot easier, I guess, to ignore. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think in this day and age, it's a lot harder to ignore when everyone has a, an internet presence and you're just trying to kind of live yeah. your life whatever you want. And people just kind of constantly, you know, leave a, 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 a a digital flaming, uh, <laughs> a yeah. digital flaming bag of poop on your doorstep every morning, you know. Um, but uh, it's just uh, unfortunately the nature of the business, and I think a nature of of, of the way the world is right now. I think yeah. more people are a lot more cynical and a lot more negative, and the way the algorithm feeds into negative takes and to arguments, it just really spurs in a, a, a very. I've been spending a lot of time, you know, we're not really too much on the internet unless I'm I'm touring. And, you know, actively posting about being on tour Smart. and work. But uh, I, I've had a wonderful time the last two months being home, just kind of staying, staying, laying low, you know. Well, the, the difference is you have the talent to back it up. I love both of your records. Thank and you. Ma- Mammoth 2, which came out last year. Is that a nod to Van Halen 2? No, it's, it's a joke. I always okay. say it. I guess it depends on what the next album is going to be called. If it's Mammoth Three, I'm ripping off Led Zeppelin. If it's Mammoth, if it's a different, you know, album, then I'm ripping off Van Halen. Yeah, true. <laughs> you mentioned a couple of bands a minute ago, like Blink. And what what bands were you listening to growing up? Like, who were some of your inspirations? Uh, ACDC was was the big first uh, wow. band I got into, other than listen, you know, knowing every Van Halen song. But uh, it wasn't until I started. You know, venturing out on my own and listening to bands like Blink-182 or, or, or Tool or, uh, you know, uh, anyone from you know, Nine Inch Nails, Foo Fighters, Alice in Chains, uh, Jimmy Eat World is a big man. I don't think they get enough credit. I think people think of them as a, as a one hit wonder with the middle, but there's so much more than that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good take on everything that I really informs the mammoth sound. Who, who inspires you from a producer POV? Because your albums are so tight and produced so slickly and the sound is so full. Is there someone that you early on were looking up to and from that era for well on the buttons? Well, actually, I'm not I, I'm not the one producing. Oh, you're not doing it? Okay. My producer, Elvis Basquette, is the one in, in, in charge of that. It's basically him and I in the studio and our engineer, uh, Jeff Mall, uh, who are kind of that, that dream team that makes everything mammoth. Man. Yeah, Elvis He's the best. <laughs> that dude is like got it on lock. I didn't know how much of that you you were involved with. Uh, I know you guys are coming to Atlanta with Creed in yeah. December. I think it might be your last date. See, yeah, I think it's one of the last dates. Yeah. yeah December fourth, yeah. Creed with uh, anyone else on the bill or just you two? Uh, I think it's depending on where it is. It's uh, three doors down. I oh believe. yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I think they're they're on that one as well at State Farm Arena. I have to say, you know. Five, six years ago, people were saying, rock is dead, rock is dead, but not anymore. It's back in such a big way, and you're part of that, which is amazing. How do you feel like, as far as when you're touring, like, your crowd, do you feel like you get a mixture of people that are into, you know, classic rock, new rock, alternative yeah, it's it's really incredible. You think uh, it might be a, a, an older skewed crowd because of you know rock kind of not being the you know the golden genre uh, that much anymore. But I, it's remarkable the 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 age discrepancy at every show that we have. It's 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 all ages from from young kids to parents with their young kids to to, to dudes in their twenties and thirties. It's it's uh, it's really cool. It's it's kind of a this all encompassing sort of thing. It really seems to be coming back. Let's talk about your mom for a minute. Valerie Bertinelli, for those that don't know. Love her. We may need to have a TikTok intervention. Oh, Wolf. stop it. <laughs> Wolf, we, I, maybe because I follow you all over the place that your mom's now in my algorithm. But she's like doing bits on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, she is way more in tune with uh, social media and TikTok more than I think ever, I ever will be. I mean, do you ever show up to see mom and she's like right in the middle of a TikTok like, Wolf, shh. Calm. I'm, I'm in production. Not yet. Not yet. And <laughs> if, if she did, I'd probably shut it down and or, or at least try to ruin the TikTok. I know there's been moments where she's tried to like, we've been at dinner and she's tried to like take a picture of the food and I just immediately grab a fork and just completely mess it up. <laughs> so it doesn't do it anymore. Uh, you know, just to be that loving, annoying son. <laughs> she's, she's definitely doing bits. Um, I want to ask you about an uncomfortable topic, but I don't think you'll run from it. What the hell is going on with the hatred from David Lee Roth? My name is Dave Roth, and I'm interviewing a very special guest this evening, our Lord and Savior, Mr. Jesus Christ. Jesus. (laughs) I mean, Mr. Christ. Welcome. Welcome. Kid. 
Likewise. We're told you have a message for all of mankind. Bro, I just want people to know, okay? I want people to know. I got this job because of my talents, okay? Oh, absolutely. I would have had this job anyway, even if my dad wasn't God. This f***ing kid, he's complaining the entire tour like I'm not paying enough attention to him on stage. Shalom to the dome, homie. I'm giving him the best. Everything I've got in front of 20, 30,000 people at a clip, and he's complaining to everybody around me. Dave's not paying enough attention to me. I don't understand. What's wrong with him? I don't uh, understand why he's calling you out so in such a vile fashion. I just, uh, I guess I'm honored he even thinks about me as much as he seems to. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I guess you have to take what he says with a grain of salt, considering he also said that he wrote Eruption and came up with the, the Frankenstein story. What? So, I didn't uh, know that. He said he wrote Eruption? Yeah, okay. he said he wrote all the songs that dad wrote. So, He's sort of unhinged on a lot of... I guess that's all I can say. You know, I, 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 I seem to have been born into this Van Halen drama that has come way before me. Um, and I guess now that uh, uh, my dad isn't here to be a target... Uh, I guess he went to the next best thing. It's, uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, Alex, we don't hear much from him. Is there a chance of any kind of Van Halen reunion, not with David, but with it's any of you guys? It's impossible to have a reunion. Nothing. Not- I, I mean, reunion of, of course, all due respect for your dad. I'm saying with you involved. Cause you, no way. No way. No, I don't want to play that music without my dad. So that's why we keep hearing all this talk of things that are supposed to be going on, but I guess they're calling them not reunions, but they're saying like um, honorary or tributes. Or- tributes. So nothing no. like that. No. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you because your dad is Van Halen. I mean, that sound that he, in that era at that time, and he stayed there his whole career. But the yeah. only other person I could think that was even close was Randy Rhodes yeah. as a guitarist. Yeah, definitely. That I thought was just insane. Yeah, I really love your attitude and your positivity and taking the high road. So thank you, Wolf. I did want to ask you about, uh, because I read an article about, you know, when you played your dad's solos for the Taylor Hawkins tribute and how that sort of changed your music. Uh, I think it just, I, I, it it made me a bit more confident in terms of a guitar soloing uh, Mm -hmm. sort of area. You know, I think... uh, First and foremost, you know, I'm uh, when it comes to Mammoth, I'm a songwriter. You know, I I, I live for for writing the full song, and I, I I remember seeing a lot of criticisms after the first album, uh, and I thought it was really funny that there's just like some, you know, grown dudes who just seem to only listen to music so they can hear the 20 seconds after the second chorus with a guitar solo mm-hmm. yeah. instead of appreciating you know the construction <laughs> of a song or you know what the drums are doing or vocals, melody, uh, stuff like that. Um, but it did make me, you know, reevaluate and and want to maybe aggressively play a bit more. I think that's why there's some uh, some more uh, shreddier solos on Mammoth Two compared to the first one. That does, I mean, there were still solos on the first album, but uh, it just gave me a bit more confidence to kind of be myself um, and uh, and explore that a bit more. So yeah, that's I really good that's, to know. Like another celebration at the end of the world. I feel like that was such inspired by your dad. I mean, just, yeah, I, mean, it's just uh, I, I think inherently uh, I'm just comfortable tapping. Yeah. You know, it's a fun uh, sort of uh, flashy thing and, and it sounds cool. So why it, not do it? You know? So cool. <laughs> and that that I think is the hardest thing is you have this talent. But because of your name, people automatically just start talking. Shit. I mean, it's just like do your thing and don't worry about it if you don't want to be involved in it. You know, it's, I don't get it. I, I, I do. I think it's uh, again, I think that goes back to to how cynical we are as a as a people lately. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, I think the, the second generation working in the first generation's uh, business is a very common thing. I think people wouldn't complain if my dad owned a, you know, a, a bait and tackle store. And then yeah. I took, it, you know, after he, he left, it's just kind of that. But music and, and concerts involve you know people coming to see you so i think that that pseudo fame aspect of it kind of taints it you know yeah. um 
uh, and it's uh, I don't know. I'm that's not why I do it. I do it because I love music, and it's if I if I could never have to be on social media or you know uh, have to <laughs> have to talk to uh, you know to people trying to be you know trying to tear me down and stuff. You know, I would really just focus on the music. I can totally understand why some people just want to be bedroom creatives and just yeah. make music. And that's it. But it's a it's a part of the business and the job, unfortunately. But uh, you know, it's always wonderful when there's the awesome people to talk to you like, like you guys. Well, thank you. And if it doesn't work out, I think Van Halen's Bait and Tackle Shop is a great idea. <laughs> I like the name. It's catchy. And so, I mean, Wolfgang, we do have to remind people what an incredible musician you are. You played every instrument on Mammoth 2. What made you decide to do that? That's incredible. Yeah, I think uh, I was really inspired by Dave Grohl and the way he he tracked the first Foo Fighters album. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That was always a dream of mine. Uh, uh, gosh, ever since I've been playing uh, music, I was like, you know, I'd really love to try and see if I could do that. And uh, with the first Mammoth album, it took me years, you know, trying to figure out what my sound would be. But, uh, you know, after after doing it, it was like, hey, I can actually pull this off. So it was really fun to to after having, the, again, the, the confidence of being able to pull off the first album. That's where I kind of went all in with Mammoth 2. Uh, to do it again and, and and do it even better. So I was that really, had to be a lot to step forward. How much of that first record did your dad hear? Oh, he heard all of it. He, he heard, heard all. Some, of it. He heard some songs I had written prior that were on Mammoth Two as well. He like uh, when working on 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 Mammoth One, I wrote twenty eight songs. Wow, for it. dang! Uh, and so some of the ideas were reworked and ended up. I think songs like uh, what Erase Me and uh, 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 gosh, what was another one? I can't remember. Uh, Miles Above Me, I think was an idea mm-hmm. that already worked on Mammoth 2. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, I, I think as a, as a songwriter, you're always kind of tweaking and it's like, uh, you know, this idea doesn't work now, but yeah. we'll fix it later and see what happens. And that happened for Mammoth 2. Well, thank you for joining us. We can't wait to see you December 4th with yes. Creed and Three Doors yeah. Down, State Farm Arena, Wolfgang Van Halen. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Good morning, X. With Barnes and Leslie. 